Hello and welcome. Oh, you want to start? Yes, no, no, you, start. you got it covered. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Do your own intro. Hi, hi. Hello and welcome. I'm Sam. This is Andre. Uh, Andre's going to be interviewing me. About I something. will be flipping the roles. Flip the script. So usually I'm the one getting interviewed, so I get to be the interviewer this yes. time. Yes. Go me. All right. So, Sam. You have been on this journey of yours for some time, okay? And uh, one of the things I actually hear a lot, I've, I've heard it at the previous retreats, I hear it when people come around, uh, and it would be interesting to see what you have to say about this. But I, I hear that people often look at your journey because you share a lot of it on social media, mm -hmm. and they seem to think that you got to where you are like this fast, right? Like it was just, I snapped my finger and everything just happened, right? Um, what I have explained to them is that, yes, it may look like that, okay? Because maybe you were following Sam for some time, but all of a sudden all this stuff started happening. But what you don't realize is the progression that she had to go through to get there, right? So what can you say about the progression of your journey that helped you get to where you are? Oh my gosh, I feel like I tell this story a lot on social media, the whole story about crying for three years straight, <laughs> which you were there for. I was there for that. And yeah. like the whole money struggle and, and being someone who thinks that if you want to survive, you literally have to wake up, try to find ways to make money, go to sleep, rinse and repeat every single day, and eventually something will happen. Mm -hmm. And I did that for three years, and it was miserable. And then one day, I, for some reason, I just got to the end of my rope, and I, you remember me saying this, I have no more tears left to cry. I am done. Mm -hmm. I give up. I surrender to life. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I remember I don't that. Care. I remember yes. that, yeah. And that was the day I realized, A, I could ask you for help, and B, I did not have to suffer. Mm -hmm. It was literally a choice that I was suffering every single day. And that was when things started working out effortlessly. Mm -hmm. I just was following instructions. I was asking for help, I was getting help, then I was doing exactly what I was told by you and by my intuition. Yeah, yeah let's actually expand on the latter, sure. the intuition. Okay, so you, didn't really know much about intuition at all. Nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when it was presented to you, you had a very what type of reaction when I uh, yes. explained it to yes. you, right? So <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, are you just making this up? <laughs> like, just, yes. Like, this was the response, right? <laughs> so then you were you had your first experience. What was that like? Okay, so I when I asked you for help, although I had no real expectations of what you would share with me, I was under the impression that it would not be that. Like you would give me some like, okay, you're gonna reach out to this person and ask them to do whatever. Like just typical phase one expectations of how to make a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And I was open to that. I was literally open to whatever you would tell me. So when you told me that I was gonna learn how to work with my intuition, that was very much like, Okay, uh, are we in some kind of simulation? Like, <laughs> I am creating my entire reality and I am connected to some source of awareness outside of myself. That blew my fucking mind. That was insane. Mm. So that was my experience. But I was so, again, so open to it. Yeah, at, at that point, it's like, okay, I did all this other stuff. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's got to be something else, but I don't know what it is. Right, and, and um, yeah. so... For you, mm -hmm. once you got over that hurdle, you had that experience, what was life like afterwards? So now you have did the crime for three years, you got sick of that journey, you were done, and now I'm telling you, okay, we gotta get you in contact with your intuition. We gotta walk you this whole thing. Yeah. So you had that experience, what was, it, what was it like after that? After I started using my intuition? Yeah. <laughs> it was mind, fucking blowing because the whole thing about following your feelings and following what you actually want to do making the thing that you feel excited about not the thing that makes sense um going and buying cheese from the grocery store because that's what you're being shown to do even though it you have no idea how that's supposed to help you right 
it opened up this world of possibilities and experiences that I had never allowed myself to have. And one of those experiences, the, the main one was not figuring everything out. Mm -hmm. It's like before I started using my intuition, the only thing there was to do was figure it out. And that is an exhausting way to live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I did that one for years. I'm good. <laughs> so we just did this other interview about the retreats and, and how we just completely open ourselves up to whatever happens in the moment. We literally, and you showed me this, live a completely different way yeah. than most people do. And that I have so much gratitude for, for you for showing me that and for myself for being open to it. The one of the responses that we get, uh, well, I get this one uh, and I don't know so much about you, but mm -hmm. I get this response of, I just don't understand how you can live like that. Right. Like, I, I get that response <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, good. <laughs> well, but it's those same people that once they like do it themselves, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, I get it. I'll, I'll buy 10, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> they're, like, yeah. They're, they're like that. Mm -hmm. um, once you started sharing your experience with this, what type of response did you get? It was, it was a response of like exuberance and ecstasy and joy. And people just like Mandy, for example, was just like, I'm obsessed with watching you live your life. Yeah. You could be laying in bed with a blanket on you talking into the camera while you're live streaming on Instagram. And I'm just there. This is so fucking interesting. And that was the majority of the response. Sure. There's people who are like, you know, haters or whatever, but it became, it felt like I was a beacon of freedom for people. And that was so energizing. It felt like my existence alone finally was worth something. Mm. And I didn't have to have all these skills and all this knowledge that I could share with people to be valuable and helpful. It was literally just my way of being. That is um, one of the things that gets told a lot, mm. that you have to have like this amazing skill and that yeah. if you're not proficient at your skill, then you're useless. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I even operated under that premise for a really long time as a freelancer. Like I developed all these skills and, but I still felt useless. <laughs> like, it didn't really, yeah. it didn't really change anything. It's not about the skills. It's, it's not about the skills. Right. So when people ask, like, what do you do? What's your response? Whatever I want. <laughs> all right. Well now see that type of response. How do people respond to that? They, they, <laughs> there's so many different responses. Some people are like, hell yeah, I get it. Like, that's fucking awesome. And other people, they, they dig into it. They're like, okay, well, but what do you really do? Like, what do you, what do you get paid to do? How do you make your money? How do you make a living? And I don't, I don't have an answer to that, you know? Yeah. Like one of my favorite responses when people ask me that is I'm retired. I'm retired. Uh, yeah. And they're like, what are you the, fucking yeah, the, 25? Yeah. They, they'll say that like. <laughs> They're like, what are you, 25? How are you retired at 25? I'm like, <laughs> one, I'm not 25. <laughs> so. like, let's just get that off the table. Yeah. I'm not 25, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I love giving that response to people because they it just, what? Blows their mind. It blows their mind. They're yeah. like, how could you be retired at your age? Mm -hmm. Because to them, they have been conditioned mm -hmm. to believe that retirement, they had to be old for that. You got to be old. Yeah, you got to be old yeah. for that. You got to be 65 mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, whoa, wait a second. How the hell did you do that? What would you do before this? The same. You know, just, right. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> let's fast forward. So now you've been doing this now for two years. Yep. This particular journey. Yep. Okay. And you've done a lot of the ups and downs that people have in their uh, journeys. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was the toughest down in the last two years for your, with your journey? Oh my God. The toughest down was the mental and emotional anguish that I was going through when, uh, after the first retreat, when we had those people move in with us, Mandy uh, and Megan. Yes. Um, that was, that was a mind fuck 
on a scale of epic proportion. I was literally tormenting myself mm. all day, every single fucking day. And ironically, I was still making shitloads of money. Like <laughs> I just realized that it doesn't matter. For I went through this phase of like, okay, I have to be happy and free and like excited about my life to make money. And then I went through a phase of, I just need energy to make money. Mm. And sure, it's not about money, but these are patterns that I noticed. That was the most difficult time. Okay. And what I learned was that, okay, A, those people were there for a reason. B, I created them being there so I could get through this. C, that our relationship was stronger than I thought it was. And D, I also held the power to let the experience go. Mm. I did not have to wait for something outside of myself to happen. That was it. Okay, now let's actually go back to D because mm. uh, a lot of the time uh, people will wait for a sign mm -hmm. of some type to say, okay, everything's okay now. So yeah. you decided to just be like, everything's okay now yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was that like? That was so liberating. I remember we were in Hawaii and I had gone out to get some dinner with Mandy and I just decided like, you know what? I don't fucking care. I don't care. It's whatever happens, happens. I don't want to give too many details. It's not really relevant, but whatever happens, happens because it's just about me. Sure. And I would like to not spend my days suffering anymore. And then the next day, everything changed. Yeah. I just brought the focus back to myself. Yeah. It's um, something that you could learn from is that um, the there are times where we think that situations in our lives are one way and it turns out they're nothing like that, mm -hmm. right? And when we remove ourselves from the consumption of the idea, everything related to it just collapses. Right. So for in your case, when you were talking about how you just like, all right, whatever, then literally that entire situation disappeared. Dissolves. Yeah, yeah. It just went away. It went away. It fixed itself. It was resolved. Mm -hmm. And because I, I had been telling you at this time that once you do that, it will go away. That I was like, it will just vanish. Like the, everything related to it will mm -hmm. go away. And lo and behold, that's what happened. You were exactly right. Okay, that's exactly what happened. And then, so now you get to see the power of, oh, wait a second, I can just let shit go and they go away. Because if you're letting it go, it goes away, right? Yep. So then now, okay, so we went to the tough thing. Mm -hmm. What was the thing that was like the rocket ship? That was oh. like, pew. The rocket ship was the very first month of doing this with my intuition like that you know what it's funny that you asked this question because i i think it's overdue for another rocket ship experience like that sure. and the the first from the very beginning of this entire journey this phase two journey following my intuition that i've been on the liberation was so invigorating and having people support me in that in the form of like just getting excited on social media, buying the book that we put out, Quantum Networking, um, watching my content, watching my stories, sending me messages. That was like, finally I was having fun being mm -hmm. alive and doing my thing. And that just lit a fire under my ass. And I wanted everyone to fucking know about what we teach and what I had learned and was learning at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... If there was any advice you would give to someone who is just starting on their journey, because you started your journey a few years ago, mm -hmm. right? So if they were just starting out. They just discovered you. They just discovered quantum networking. They just discovered even the community. Mm -hmm. They had just discovered all of this. What advice would you give them? Put your ego aside. If you actually knew how life works, it would be working out for you the way that you want it to right now. I allowed myself to benefit from this information, the same information we're giving you, when I accepted that I did, I simply just didn't know how life works and what's really available to me and what I have to do to get to where I want to be. 
and I let myself be helped and guided by other people and by my intuition. So get to that point where you are just surrendering completely to a new perspective, a new awareness. Open up to it and use it. That's my advice. Before we depart, one final thing is to piggyback off of what you just said. Mm -hmm. Many of us have perspectives that we have built up throughout our entire lives. We've watched our parents, we've watched friends, and we've watched neighbors, and we've watched TV. And we have had all these ideas mm -hmm. that are given to us, okay? With these ideas that are given to us, we are, we're not forced into accepting any of these ideas. We are simply put in a position where we don't know better, so we just accept them. All right. When you start listening to yourself, when you start paying attention to your intuition, when you start paying attention to your feelings that's going on inside of you, you'll see a completely different world than what you're looking at now. It's it's instantaneous. Yeah, it it's in, take it, a long time. yeah, right. It's instantaneous because mm -hmm. for her, it was literally the day up. Yeah, right. Same day. Same day. When you start doing that, you start paying attention to everything that's going on. You'll see the building blocks of your life start forming in a way that are vastly different than anything you've ever seen mm -hmm. and vastly quicker than anything you've ever seen. Yeah. The veil gets lifted and suddenly everything makes more sense. You start to realize what you have literally not seen that's been right in front of your face. That was my experience with you. Like... I just simply ask you for help yeah. and listen to what you have to say. And you'd been doing that. You've been offering to help me for years. And I just, it just went right over my head that I could accept it. Well, you got yourself to a point where you could accept it. Yep. Because even if I had helped you at that time, it would have been impossible. Would have, yes, it would not have worked. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got yourself. It wasn't anything I did. You got yourself to a point where it was, okay, I'm done. And then I could help them. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you, Sam, for doing this interview. All right. Thank you for interviewing me. You can find the links in the description for our book, Quantum Networking, as well as our community. And if you just would like to leave some comments or things you would like for us to talk about in this podcast, feel free to leave one so that we hear from you and we can give you what you're looking for. Thanks for watching. Adios. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>